Of the sayings from my loft in my stable do I relate to you my observations of that night. Having cleansed by hand and fork the straw so soiled of this keeping place of beasts, the ass and sheep and the ox, for it is my place, and after watering and greening them, and after having fitted their beds with new straw for my loft, made I myself to my master for the other tasks as he saw them, and when these tasks he gave were completed of my doing, the master did dismiss me from my night's rest in the very stable he rewarded me with my work. Upon climbing my ladder to my loft for sleeps, I did wish to my beasts all a calm night and a peaceful dreamings, and as soon as the straw my loft did hold did prickle my back and neck, passed I into that other world of dreams and strange rememberings, whereupon I found myself at standing upon waters of such long sights as nowhere did I forever see in the world of every days. A sky as of pearls dancing and exchanging places were they, these pearls. Beckon they did to me without voice, by my thinking their thoughts, to walk off into the father's places of these waters. And I did this, and as I did the father's place to where I walked, afar had begun to glow with such a light as I could not be seeing with my eyes in the open position. But did I, as the voiceless speakings of the pearls had thought me commanded, verily in short of times were their images of one, two, threes men, seeming, approaching me too on that whitest of far off place of water, men I could tell being the only standing out features more light than their pure, pearly surrounding, for shining themselves were they without light of gold. For quick I came did I, as if a youngster feared of his own shadow, as a power as that of a thousand horses seemed to pulling me to them in their direction. Such a power, and I have in my body known the tug of yet only two or three horse. If had I not also in my inner stomach and head felt such a peace at them, a wonder of all of it, these experiences would have called me to a place for fainting. These figures, or I, did approach any distances, having gone away. I stood before the great honourable ones who look as kings, as I have only heard them to look, not having the blessed be experienced myself. They were all over with jewels of size and golden woven clothing, long robes that glimmered as the sea waters themselves. Bowed down I began to them to die, but up they raised me with hands of gentle touch and bright smiles. They in my hand took theirs and lifted it up to the sky of pearls, so as to be of sureness that I would observe. My hand in their hands pointed I did to the brilliant sky. When in moments time the pearls that were at the sky all gather in together as if to become one great one, a pearl of pearls. As a star may be smaller than my own sun at daylight, but the brightness could not be guessed at my own imaginings. So much more light did it have and give, how strange to say it burned me not. All of a sudden, from this pearl, this star did pour its contents of streams of pearls down upon me, as though it was a great pitcher pouring at large, largest supply of purest, whitest milk. The stream of pearls of light spilled down on the body of me, then enter it did my forehead, filling its pourings in me of peace and trickles of joy, and down my back it flowed all the way down to the toes of my feet. This body of me did glow, me thoughts, as the midnight moon at darkest fall. Frozen without my breathing or senses I was, save one my seeing, which had betrayed its master, me. For so next I saw the royals three kneel before me, and wash my feet did they with the verily waters upon those I stood, offering cools to my insides against the fires in me that did not burn. And then these things did pass away from my eyes as if I were to sleep and go again. I did next feel myself the kindly pressure of a hand upon my shoulder, the hand belonging upon opening my eyes to lamplight to my master. Come, he persuaded me in a manner most pressing, we must make room for the mother. I followed him straight from my straw, the strange pictures I did just dream, burning still in my mind's eye, as faintly but steadily as the embers of the morning fire from the night having passed away. He says she is with child, we must make a place for her. There are no rooms this night. Full is the inn. Prepare the stall. I bring them to here shortly, said he. I had not seen my master so moved in previous pasts, or maybe it was I, maybe, who was so taken by my dreams. No less, I prepared the resting place for the mother, as master commanded. Having moved the ass to one bedding area next to where the ox lay, watching me so quiet, the sheeps I led to the stable ending area beneath the window's place, and they did not protest too loud at having a disturbance, and being taken from their visit to their dreamy other world. Perhaps they had visions to their own kind so strangely such as my own self had had. If so, blessings on you, dear ones. I did not see a light through them shine, though, any bright.
greater than I see day to day. I think this it made me a bit too sad. Find it I the straw where the beasts did lay, to be quite warm at hand from their touch, which I felt would be nice for the mother. I would pad these laying spots with more fresh straw from my loft, even though the straw bedding was the first one time used for the beasts. Having climbed the ladder up to the loft and sending the straw down with my tossing, I removed my sleeping blankets from my laying spot, and down climbing the ladder I finished me did, the bed making and the straw in the stall. And to make sure as the making was complete, I lay my blankets down in two layers so as to make the spot so soft for the mother. Morley, a lavender bunch I kept for the noses of my new lambkins I tied to the wall, board above the bedding for the mother, as to make the finished touch and happy smells mixing with smells that could be about for my beasts. The ox was so still and watching, gave the satisfactions of my doings to me with a wink. The creaking of the hinge on my stable door, forgot I to oil this on this day, told all present in the stable the mother was come. I stood back to back with the wall, bowing to master as he entered first by a low bright lantern, which he hung on a near nail so as to have some purseing at least, and Mrs. Master as she came then behind him too. The mother then I saw come, a little figure covered all over for warmth, only the face left open, which did give up a smile, a little one, lovely tiny at the lips. A smile to me, she gave. When my eyes did find hers, dark, dark black saucers were they, and from the open windows did spill the light of the moon and beams upon those eyes. And I have seen such eyes before looking back at me in my work, in the coal I digged sparkling in the high sun of day. Methinks I did know this mother before this account, as I had seen her eyes too, sparkling in bubbles and waters of the brook from where my sheep do heal their thirst, and in the stars twinkling at dark sky time, but mostly as in the coals. I could tell plain by looks the road had taken from her strength great parts, as if she had no effort left on account of the flying away from the war at her country, that it seemed my guessing look. So mention I quickly to her resting place, and the father, strong and bearded, dark of figure, I could tell still beyond master's dim light lamp, gently he her helped to the lay down spot. Mrs. Master placed blankets around her soft and quiet. Master and Mrs. Master thanked me also quiet, dismissing me to my loft. The father nodded his thank you greatly, I could tell by his moving. He too had lost strength to the road, away from their country war, I thought. It seemed right to me they had left their war on account of that they were peaceable and kindly to me, the master and the Mrs. Master, belonging not to the warring. Settled I was now in my lay down spot, but master's little lighted lamp did not go away, and Mrs. Master did not go home of yet, as I heard her voice. All down there began at speaking so and fast words at one time together. I did see the door creak open and Mrs. Master rushed to out and come back in a moment with a bowl with water and some cloths. I heard more fast words and what I think was a hard sound from the mother and then no sounds from any for a moment. And then I heard the wee voice, baby to take its first words of cry sounds, of course, in my own dark and stable mind in a stall of the usual laying down place of my ass and shapes. I was quite glad I had put the lavender there for the mother to use if she would, on account of nurse the baby lambs did love it with her nose, and even though I have drawn some laughter on this, I swear a lambkin can smile on account of a nose he filled with happy lavender. And so I hope the baby, girl or boy, I could not tell these things from sounds in my loft, would smile at the happy smell of it to give us all some peace for sleeping. Having had this experience with my lambkin's new voices, I had pre-thoughts that the young one may want its new language to go later into the night as my lambkin speakings did go. But the words of the child became quiet, fast talking from the parents and Mr. and Mrs. Master. Worried me thought about that child. I crawled to the edge of the loft for peaks. I saw the child lambkin poking a face out from the wrappings as I'd seen the face of the mother at first sight. Soft in the mother's arms was the babe, and then laughter and joy and tears from all down there. The baby, a quiet still one, was all. The worries were only mine, and theirs, till otherwise had the child proved us wrong with the breathing. And before the wee lamb closed heavy eyes flaps for dreams, we did find our eyes did meet in also a manner as had the mother's eyes with mine in the moonbeams, which gave sparkles to the dark coals that were the eyes. And as I have said, that much laughter I have taken on account of my lavender bringing smiles to the lamb's lips. I swear did some lavender also bring one smile to this little lamb too. The eyes of mother and babe did close together. Mr. and Mrs. Master and the father I watched gave a thank you to the bringer of all babes from heaven. And all was quiet, and the master and Mrs. did quiet and darken further the 
the stables light by taking the lamp's low candle and moving to their beds at the inn building. In the moon's friendly lights that were left, I looked one last peek upon that mama and babe and papa who had taken themselves all in that dreamy land. I had hopes their country's wars not find them again. People of peace were these good folk. Glad was I to have them this night and this way to my stable. I went to dreamlands once again, methinks, but will not know forever sure. As in quick time I was looking peaks at the babe and the mother and father still from my loft, as before it seemed to me I crawled away to my lay down spot in dreams. Following this I found at once as I looked down upon them, great pearls of sky had come down to inside my stable top, taking away my vision of my roof. Only pearls all a glitter so high above me, about me, below me. The pretty piece of brick waters trickling tickled my inner stomach and gave much peaceful feelings within. I knew from this, from my own experience, the royals would see me soon too. Come they would. Sure of it. The pearls were theirs, all of them all. I was not okay enough to see such a thing as next I saw. Around this child below, asleep with mother and father, blessing were the pearls of skylights turning upon them. Round and round, a swirling sea of lights acted upon us as if great turning winds, spinning and spinning. And the trickling waters, as like before, speak great words to me, for voices so many as I could never forever be accounted of them. And the voices froze me, so many in number they were. And the youngster so frightened, as its own shadow became I again. I was not feeling so safe. I knew not what was happening. Run to hide I could not. All in my powers to do was to watch with open eyes, as before in my dreamy dreams with the royals. I looked upon the spinning sea of sky, pearls of lights, and observed in fact as they did begin to take on wings, as of the dove birds, each one, and faces and mouths and little arms and legs and hands and feet grew they. And then I knew from this sight the waters had said their speakings from these mouths. More little winged ones I saw than stars. I could see for sure in the darkest night of a moon not there. Around and round and around this babe all these winged ones moved. Not a pearl was left that did not have a winged body to become. And each winged one passed by this babe in turn with an admiration. I can call it of one who is so grateful to another for relieving him of a long, long time of pain of his own and his family and their family and all their kinfolk. Even as would all mothers give thanks a king not taking sons, their only sons, to war upon their sister, cousins and kin and also their own sons. And when this all along is pain was not for the mothers no longer. Only a large, biggest joy was left to play in their hearts and in the hearts of their sister cousins and kin and their sons at peace, having all parts of the body being undismantled as they should have been for all time. Peace was not any war left to break the hearts of the mothers and the bodies of the sons. This and these experiences I had observed from my loft and dreams, methinks, but do not for all time know as I have said. And all methinks to know is that the bringer of all babes from heaven did smile upon this one babe, boy or girl. I never knew, and therefore thusly upon us all. The bringer had fond thoughts for this one, much to bring all the winged ones here to pass by the babe in blessing and thank yous. Like I have said, you know those royals did later come days later to my stable as I had visions in my dreamy land, with faces as I did see them with, and costumes all jeweled and in their glowing golden. From my loft I peeped sights of them too, unseen by them. Did I see these visions only in my dreamy land? Maybe. The mother and babe and father did wish soon to leave to be back on their road, gave to me back my stall for my ass and sheeps, and gave to them the little lavender bunch for the happy smells for the babe's nose to bring smiles to those little lips, as they upon their hard and methinks road goeth, which I hope for them at the end was peace far away from their country's wars, as I have said. And I talked to the bringer of all babes from heaven that he follows them with the winged ones for the good of all sons and mothers and fathers and daughters and cousins and kinsfolk of all our worlds. So Wars would have no use in the hands of peoples with peace in their thoughts. The master had another in mind to make me place oil upon the hinge that squeaked on the door of my stable that very night, so that if the family should pass here again, we should not awake poor road tired babe who came to rest in my stall again. And this did I with all the joys and hopes in my heart that it would be so glad for us all to have them.